water is continuously circulating around our planet. It's the reason that any life is possible here on Earth in the first place. Whether it be rivers, waterfalls, lakes, or the ocean, for many of us being near moving water brings an almost mystical enjoyment. But for scientists and engineers, our goal is to move beyond just passively enjoying water. We want, and actually need, to be able to understand it. It's by gaining this understanding that we are able to predict how water courses will behave as they interact with our civilization, and ultimately be able to harness its life-giving power to sustain humanity. There are many different subjects that investigate the intriguing and surprising attributes of this unique substance, but possibly the most fundamental of these subjects is studying how water actually moves. Hi, I'm James, and in this series of lessons we're going to be looking at hydraulics, which is the study of how water moves. As we move through these lessons, hopefully we'll go on a journey together where we're going to learn how to characterise flowing water, how to be able to predict how flowing water will behave under different circumstances, and ultimately be able to design our own systems to convey water in the way that we want. Now hydraulics can be quite a tricky subject, so I've tried in this series of lessons to make the content as accessible as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is break each lesson down into three or four mini videos and we're only ever going to look at one topic in each video. I'm also going to try to use as much practical content as possible. So we're going to do some shooting on location, looking at examples of, of flows in the real world. And I've also built some models that are hopefully going to help us understand how water flows under different conditions. And finally, I'm going to try to only ever use footage in these videos that I've taken myself. So all of the photos in the opening sequence were photos that I've taken myself and all of the videos that I'm going to use for the rest of this lesson will be videos that I've taken myself. And the reason for that is rather than just taking stock footage off the internet, I really want us to be able to share some experiences together that are going to help us to learn about hydraulics as we move through these lessons. So what we're going to do now is have a look at an example of a flow in the real world and start to think about how water moves in nature. Behind me is the Nanquanol stream. This is a small mountain stream that flows in mid Wales and I think this is going to be a slightly more appropriate location for us to start to think about hydraulics and how water moves. The Nanquanol stream is a great example of how interesting naturally flowing water can be. The stream itself is not particularly unique. There are hundreds of examples of mountain streams like this in this part of Mid Wales, and indeed all over the world, you'll never be too far from an interesting water course in one form or another. The stream follows a life cycle that is pretty much exactly what you probably studied in secondary school geography. The majority of the water begins its life in the ocean, and the nearest beach to our stream is where the Irish Sea meets the small town of Tawin. Tawin is a relatively flat area, but as we move inland, the landscape begins to become more rugged. The small village of Abergenolwyn, located approximately 12 kilometres from Tawin Beach, is surrounded by this rugged terrain, and it's the mountains and hills that rise above this small settlement that give rise to the stream. As the warm, moist air from the sea moves inland, it runs into these mountains and is forced to rise. As it rises, it cools and condenses into clouds, which ultimately leads to rain on the high ground. This image is a slightly clearer example of this process, taken in northern Italy, but exactly the same process is taking place here in Wales. It's the rainwater, whether it be direct runoff or water that has been stored as groundwater, that feeds the stream. The initially steep slopes in the mountains leads to fast flowing water and you can clearly see where the force of the water has cut through the rock. The rocks and terrain in the mountains lead to all kinds of interesting flow patterns.
As the water makes its way down the mountain, the slope flattens and the stream begins to slow and spread out. As it leaves the mountains, it flows through Aberganolwyn. Five kilometres east of this stream, and another watercourse is beginning its journey. The Talaflin Lake collects water from the surrounding mountains and streams, and is the source of the River Dusuni. The Talaflin Lake is a glacial ribbon lake, and was formed by a combination of being located on a major fault line, and the effects of the last glacial age. The River Dusuni flows out of the Talaflin Lake, and down the valley into Labaganolwyn, where it joins with the Nankwanol stream. Here the rivers combine forces and then continue to work their way slowly towards the sea, getting wider, deeper and slower as the land continues to flatten. By the time the river reaches its estuary, it's almost unrecognisable from the fast flowing rapids in the higher parts of the mountain, just a few kilometres upstream. At the estuary, the river returns the water to the sea, completing the short 15 kilometre loop from source to sea. I had picked a great spot to shoot the river mouth, but when I arrived this partially constructed bridge almost entirely blocked my view, and there was no easy way around it in the time scale of a busy day of shooting. I just about managed to get a shot of the river mouth around the bridge using my longest lens. Hopefully this sequence has provided an interesting starting point to start thinking about moving water. By looking at this hydrological process, you can start to gain some insight and ask some interesting questions about the hydraulics of flowing water. So what we've done in this first lesson is look at an example of a flow in nature and look at the different ways in which water moves as it makes its way through the water cycle. What we're going to do in the next lesson is actually start to look at that flow in a more analytical way we're going to actually try to characterise exactly what's going on in all of the different shots that we've looked at in that sequence and start to use a bit of maths to actually understand why the water behaves in the way it does.